Hi, this is Tim, and today I'm going to show you how to make free electricity. Well, not really, but I'm going to show you something equally cool. On Christmas Eve, I posted this electricity quiz. In fact, I'll put that entire clip at the end of this video. But in it, I showed how part of my Christmas lights were glowing and asked you if you could figure out how they would. And the winner was going to get a free gift, which was going to be one of the PLC Tools analog simulators, the Sim ALP2. And there were several people that were right on the edge of the answer, but in the end, no one came up with it. So today I'm going to show you what was going on with these lights. So on Christmas Eve, I put out a video showing our Christmas tree that when the GFCI tripped, the lights still illuminated about halfway up. And I also showed that I could bypass the GFCI and do it with the switch. Now my favorite answer by far came from Dane Legetall, who said clearly it had to be Christmas magic, but there has to be some science behind every magic. So a few answers did catch my attention. A lot of people said that surely I must have a bad switch that was letting voltage leak by. Well, in the original riddle, there actually was a clue to tell you that that couldn't be it because both tripping the GFCI and switching the switch off would cause the problem. So that means we have two different switches that are causing this phenomenon. So after the switch, a lot of people talked about inductance, which could be, you could get inductance on your ground, but we're about probably a hundred feet from the nearest power source right here. So it wouldn't be likely to induce voltage, at least at this location. And then where the power goes up, it actually crosses no other electrical lines. So there's a very slim possibility of inductance. And there were many other great answers. You know, the one that I will pick on because I pick on people about saying this all the time is a lot of people said it could be stray voltage. Now the only stray voltage I truly believe in is lightning. All right, let, let, let me give that a try. Hold on, hold, hold on a second. Okay, that didn't seem to work. All right, well, let's move on to other ideas. Now, another thing that a lot of people brought up is that cheap LEDs, especially a lot of times, will have residual voltage. In other words, they don't do a good job at draining the voltage off when they power off. Now, I actually have this issue with one of my lights in my building, and I'm gonna make a video on it sometime. Actually, I'm gonna try to make the kids a set of lightsabers out of two of my four foot LED lights, because I think they would glow for a long time. But okay, okay, that's, that's for another video. But mainly, if that was the issue, it would only last for a certain amount of time. And so, so a little background on this, because yeah, I guess I did kind of jump into this, is the first time, you know, it started raining, the GFC starts tripping, you know, and of course I'm going out there resetting it and cussing and doing everything else you do in the Christmas spirit to get your lights back on. And Michael looks at me and says, well, there's only something wrong with the top half of the lights. The bottom half are still burning. And I was like, no, you're just seeing a reflection off the moon. And I, <laughs> I didn't even look out there. So, you know, I wake up at one o'clock in the morning to do what everybody has to do at one o'clock in the morning. And I look out the window and sure enough, half the lights are glowing. Man, I hate it when he's right. That meant that around nine was when they had started tripping and okay, it's one in the morning. That means it was four hours and they were still glowing. So that's a long time if that was the issue. So before we even start guessing, what can we do to narrow down the problem? Because obviously you didn't think you were gonna get the answer without there being some troubleshooting lesson here, did you? I mean, this is a troubleshooting channel. Well, the first thing we do is we need to know what type of voltage we have. And two things we need to know is first, yeah, the amount, but also is it AC or is it DC? Because that is the one question I was waiting for someone to ask and no one ever did. Can you believe I'm out here again? I did all the voltage measurements and didn't realize I hit the stop record button on the camera. And if I posted this video without you actually seeing the voltage, you would have put me in the same categories as the people who had spotted Bigfoot. So I'm gonna do it again. And yeah, it's still cold. There's snow on the ground. So we're coming off of our wall power. So we wanna be on AC volts. I'm gonna put it over on 200 volt AC. I'm gonna to touch between my two leads and we have zero volt. 
Okay, so if we have zero volt, then how are we getting power down here? Is there anything else that might be conducting electricity? So next, I'm gonna check between both my 110 and this pole and my neutral in this pole. Okay, so here's my neutral. And here is my 110. We have checked our circuit and we have no voltage between our pole and our power plug. But we checked AC voltage. Now let's switch to DC and see what it says then. So to my 110 volt, I have zero. To my neutral, I have 1.7 volt DC. All right, I'm gonna go inside and explain the rest of this because yeah, my fingers are going numb. Yeah, I know I should be wearing gloves, but hopefully I covered all the voltage measurements this time because Amber wants to take the lights down and probably means we're gonna take this pole down unless I can think of something else to do it. I guess I could have just saw it flush with the ground and still have her experiment or, you know, maybe I could make a little metal thing up there that says Tim loves Amber or something. I don't know. What do y'all think? What should I do with this? Okay, so first we need a reality check. Well, one, I do need to say one thing is while it, now it is showing 1.75 volt, sustainably it was closer to 0.9 volt. But okay, in either case, well, you can use either one. We need a reality check is, can we actually light a set of 120 volt AC lights with one volt DC? Also, everybody was hung up on that it had to be the LED deal. These weren't actually LED bulbs. These are incandescent bulbs. And so I don't have the exact bulbs, but I do have some Christmas light bulbs. And then I have a DC power supply. So I'm gonna turn our amps all the way up and I'm gonna bring it down to right at around one volt. All right, so we're at one volt. So I'm gonna plug my red lead into one and my black to the other. And it doesn't matter which one. And there is, and I don't know if the, I don't think the camera's actually gonna pick that up. There is a slight glow. Hold on, let me turn the lights off. Okay, I can't get the lights all the way dim in here. There's a window I'd have to block. But I think that'll show up on the camera. There is, I mean, ever so slight twinkle of them. Okay, so we can get a slight dim twinkle out of one volt DC. So now I need to talk about where did we get one volt DC from? So to start with, here is our circuit. So we have 120 volt AC and our L1 goes up to a circuit breaker that's in our panel. And then we went to this GFCI and then we came out of it. We went to a switch and then we went to our lights and then our neutral came back through our GFCI and back to our power. Now, in the end, whatever circuit we're working with, we do have to have a continuous path from the L1 to the neutral to illuminate a light. Now, the GFCI threw a lot of you. Actually, it probably deserves its own video. It, it There's a lot of, I guess, misunderstandings of what a GFCI is and what it does. Because one, you know, here in North America, we call it a ground fault circuit interrupter. And in the rest of the world, or a lot of the world, I can't say the rest because I don't know for sure, they call it a residual current device. And I'm not sure I like the residual current better, but I think the ground fault gives you an, an idea that something is wrong with your ground. And I even know people have cut their ground prong off thinking that'll fix a GFCI problem. What the GFCI does is it says, okay, I have a certain amount of amps going this way through my L1. I must have the exact same amount through my neutral. And if there is a differential of a certain amount, we're gonna open that circuit up. So first we were tripping the GFCI. So we know that what was coming through here was not the same as was coming back. Now we also know that I bypassed the GFCI and made this circuit. So at this point, we have power, we have a circuit breaker, we have a switch, light, and goes on around. And this had the same issue with glowing. So kind of, starting to expand our picture for the grand scheme of things. For your incoming power to your house, you have L1, you have L2, and you'll have neutral, which is also connected to ground at your main breaker box. 
So between L1 and neutral, you have 120 volt. Between L2 and neutral, you have 120 volt. Between L1 and L2, you have 240 volt. And between neutral and ground, you should have zero volt. So same situation as the last circuit diagram. We have a circuit breaker in our panel. It went through a switch. We had our lights and it came back to our neutral. But when we did all our checks here, everything checked out good. We had no voltage. So that is where we needed to start looking at external sources. And that brought us to this diagram. So we started by checking between L1 and the galvanized post and we had zero volt AC and zero volt DC. And between neutral and the galvanized post, we showed zero volt AC and we showed about 1.75 volt DC. And again, when you put it under load, it did drop to right, on, right around one volt, about 0.9 volt. So when our GFCI trips or we open our switch or actually I didn't show it in there, but when you kick the circuit breaker off, then the same phenomena happens that it starts glowing. And that tells us one, we have three different points that would have to have a failure for us to have leakage current through the system. It also eliminates all of this part of the circuit. So unless there is some other thing off of L1 managing to get around, then we can actually eliminate our 120 volt power supply. Because I've always told you, if we go back to our basic diagram, that in order to power a load, we have to have a continuous path from our power supply through our load and back to our power supply. Otherwise, we don't have anything. The other clue is the GFCI was tripping. For the GFCI to trip, that means the current going out to the load didn't match the current coming back. And so that means somewhere in here, we were losing current. And yeah, there's where the rain comes in. The rain actually had two functions. Here's the first function of the rain, is there was a short in this that was shorting L1 to that steel pole in the rain. And so at that point, this opens up and follow this red line from here to the next diagram is we end up with this circuit. So again, I've already told you this power supply is gone. I mean, really, if we don't have a path from the top of this power supply through our load and back, then it has no purpose. So what we do have though, is we have this ground rod right here. So we have a ground rod. We're going up through our GFCI, through our load, and then over to this galvanized steel pole. Also at this point, this GFCI is also just a junction box really. And you end up with this diagram. And this is an earth battery or a dirt battery. And I recognized this when we actually got to this point of troubleshooting it because the kids and I actually did a STEM with them video on this. And we bought all different types of electrode materials. In fact, I'll put a link to this in the description. This is really fun to play with the kids or I don't know, I enjoy playing with them myself. But we were able to drive different materials into the ground and make an LED kind of slightly flicker. Now, there's nothing like Amber deciding she wants a 25 foot Christmas tree to put something like this on steroids. So there you have it. That's how we take this circuit and with a little bit of troubleshooting, narrow it down to this circuit to find out what our problem is. Okay, I have a few other things to cover on that, but I do want to jump over to the leakage current that many people were talking about and explain what can happen because, okay, first I'm going to repeat again because I'm going to repeat it in the video where I do it. Do not do this at home. Everybody repeat it with me. Do not do this at home. But what I have done is I have taken this diagram and let me just mark it in here, is I have added a rheostat in between the load and our neutral. And then there's our ground. Because what a lot of people said is, well, it could be leakage current. And this actually, I've seen some videos out there and I, I, well, yeah, I will talk a little bit about it, is they claim that they're making free electricity. Because what will happen here is now when I measure between my neutral and my ground, I'm going to show 115 volts. Well, first, that is not full on 115 volts. 
that's going to end up being a voltage divider between all the particular loads that are on the system. Okay, now I have I have made modifications that you should absolutely, guys, if you listen to me, this is a watch what I do, not a do what I do type experiment. Is I have added resistance to my neutral conductor so that it is not the easiest path to get back to our power source. And now let's see what type of voltage we get. Okay, so we're gonna, now we're gonna be checking AC voltage and I'm gonna touch it to my 110 and we still have zero volt or we have about 0.1 volt showing up. But now watch what happens when I check it to my neutral. Now I'm gonna show about 120 volt on my neutral. But you'll see a lot of videos where people are taking and going from like a water pipe or something and going to neutral and they're pulling off of it and creating some voltage and maybe lighting a light or maybe doing something cool. And it is a cool experiment too, but it's not free electricity because in the end that power has come out of L1. It's gone through another load and then we're picking it off and going to ground. So it actually has gone through your meter. So I'm sorry guys who have, tapped a hundred holes into your copper or water pipe and everything. But yeah, you're still paying for that electricity. Okay, there is one plot hole in my explanation that I can't fully explain. As I said, the kids and I did this experiment over the summer and we, we can make the one volt. Making one volt is really easy. And I, actually a fun experiment, if you really want to do it, is you can put them in series. So you can put, 12 of them in series and probably, you know, we probably won't get 12 volt, but maybe you'll get eight volt. So it's, it's a really fun experiment, but I can't explain the amount of capacity that this setup seems to have. Now in the end, I actually disconnected the ground rod. I mean, I, I, I made this setup right here and it did, it worked exactly the same. Those bottom lights would glow, but I can't explain the amount of capacity. I get the feeling it has something to do with the geological soil and everything underground here. Uh, the area is a big mixture of copper and iron. They, in fact, used to, you know, during the early mining days, they actually just, you would go around and they had people that went around and picked up the iron rocks off the ground. And that's how they did a lot of the smelting. Same with copper. So there, it is very iron and very copper rich. And I don't know if that mixture of it or I don't know. I do not understand that part. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you that. Oh, and I did forget one thing because I said there was a second thing about the rain is this only works when it is saturated. So it did have to be saturated and coincidentally where this copper ground rod is and where this galvanized pipe are, are both low dips. And when it rains, they become puddles, which means they were fully saturated. And once all that drains away, the battery does quit working. So what do you think of this type of video? It was kind of fun interacting with everybody, getting their ideas. And really, I think a lot, I think we, we learned, I hope, some troubleshooting skills because in the end, this is a troubleshooting channel. But would you like to do some more like this? I probably wouldn't do another one down this road. I would probably stick more of industrial. You know, we had this problem. Why do you think it was? And just see who can come up with what answers. So let me know in the comments what you think, whether you'd like to see more of these. And of course, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. Also, we're probably gonna get some people over from maybe uh, the home energy and alternative energy. Just know we actually put out industrial automation videos normally, this is not normal. But if you think you'd be interested in that, please hit that like button and subscribe also. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim, and this evening I'm coming to you as a shadow because I have an electrical quiz for you. Amber had us add a 25-foot Christmas tree to our front yard this year, and tonight it's raining, and you know how GFCIs and rain and Christmas lights usually don't get along, and this one doesn't, so it was tripping. And like everybody on Christmas Eve when your lights are tripping, I took it off the GFCI. And it works great, except when you turn the power off, the lights partially grow. Now, I already have a good suspicion of why this is happening, and we're gonna make a STEM with Tim video of it with the kids, but just wanna show you here what's happening and see what your thoughts are. So our lights are on, and I am going to turn them off. And you see they almost went off. And I'll get a little closer here where you can really see the lights are still glowing. So who here can tell me why? Because this is a really neat 
fascinating electrical characteristics. It's not as simple as the switch is halfway stuck or anything like that. So everyone have a Merry Christmas. We'll come back to you with the answer sometime next year. Everybody enjoy their holiday. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.